Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to day 233, 233, Church in the Time of Quarantine. It is November 5th. Hope everybody is doing well on this beautiful day. Uh, let's see, 1605, remember, remember the 5th of November. That was the uh, gunpowder plot when the, uh, the Catholic Guy Fox tried to blow up Parliament and James I. Uh, it didn't work, but now every year that's why the British shoot fireworks off on, uh, on November 5th. Uh, 1935, Parker Brothers introduced uh, the board game Monopoly on this day, and uh, in 1979, Ayatollah Khomeini, for the first time, labeled the United States as the Great Satan. So, we got that going for us. We weren't just any old Satan. We were, we are, I think, still the Great Satan. Okay, well, no, no announcements for today. Uh, which brings us to trivia. Yesterday we had, uh, how many? One, two, three, five correct answers came in. So the president that Mary Todd married, Mary Todd married, uh, Abraham Lincoln uh, on November 4th, 1842. And we had correct answers from uh, Josie Richards, Eric Bay, John True, Lee Nelson, and, uh, and Glenn Jones. So congratulations to all them. I think Josie even has a uh, relationship with, uh, has a relation with uh, Mary Todd, so she gets extra bonus points for that. Okay, here's today's question. So uh, uh, on this day in 1994, this boxer, who is now more known for his line of grills, uh, became the oldest heavyweight champion. Uh, at the age of 45. So the boxer who, on November 5th, 1994, uh, became the, uh, the oldest heavyweight champion and later grill master. Okay, well today um, we are going to have a reflection from Hilary of Poitiers. Um, he was a bishop of Poitiers. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, or I may be sounding ridiculous, but a uh, city in kind of southwestern France. Uh, during the 4th century. Uh, he had a great nickname. He was known as the Hammer of the Aryans. Uh, but uh, we have this quote from him today. And this came courtesy of uh, Bramwell Richards. So uh, big thanks to the Richards family today. He says this, While the faithful soul has lost and confused, while the faithful soul was lost and confused by its own feebleness, it caught a glimpse of God's magnitude in the prophet's voice. He said, by the greatness of his works and the beauty of things that he hath made, the creator of worlds is rightly discerned. The creator of great things is supreme in greatness. Of every beautiful thing, he is superior in beauty. Since his handiwork is beyond our thoughts, and the maker is greater than thought itself, heaven, air, earth, and sea are beautiful. In fact, the whole universe is beautiful. And the Greeks agree, because of its beautiful order, they call it cosmos, that is order. Our minds can estimate the beauty of the universe by natural instinct. We also see this instinct in certain birds and animals whose voices we can't understand, but whose language is clear to each other. Since all speech expresses thought, a meaning apparent to them lies in these voices. So must not the Lord of this universal beauty also be recognized as the most beautiful among all beauty that surrounds him. For although the splendor of God's eternal glory exhausts our mind's best powers, we can't help but see that he is beautiful. We must truthfully confess that God is most beautiful, for even though his beauty is incomprehensible, it forces itself on our perception. All right, and we will end with uh, proper 24. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Have a great day.